Welcome to 5 Minutes with the Newsroom. I'm here with Green Valley News and Sarita Sun reporter Kitty Bottomiller and editor Dan Shear. Kitty is here to discuss a recent story she wrote on opioids. Kitty, we worked on this story for weeks. She did a lot of work on it, talked to a lot of sources, got a lot of numbers to crunch, and we came across a particularly alarming number when it comes to opioid-related deaths in Pima County. What is that number? Uh, the running number as of uh, end of September was 333 countywide, and uh, if the trajectory remains till the end of the year, uh, the county uh, experts are uh, predicting that number could be as high as 550. That is would be a record uh, for the third year in a row. Okay, what other surprising stats did we see come out of this? Give us a few. Well, I learned that the uh, Leading cause of death for ages 19 and under is now uh, opioid overdose. And, and really, we're seeing that this is targeting younger people. Yes, we are. And that's really been a, a big change. Uh, it was in the 20s and 30s age categories, and now it's um, really they're marketing to the younger uh, uh, crowd. Uh, they're making these very attractive, the young people, you know, gummies and uh, how they package them. So yes, it's uh, it's alarming. And something that surprised me in the story was that what you <clears throat> may buy on the street today is going to be a lot more potent than maybe uh, what was bought even three to five years ago. We don't know what's in those drugs you're buying, and this is what's killing people. Yes, that's true. And it's not just that they're more potent; they are they can be mixed with anything, and they're extremely lethal, deadly, whatever word you want to use for it. This is the biggest concern about everybody I talk to here. And the word fentanyl kept coming up in the reporting quite a bit, didn't it? Yeah, and fentanyl in particular is one that uh, can be laced with other drugs. Uh, they're uh, 50 to 100 times uh, stronger than heroin. And <clears throat> I know growing up you always heard uh, heroin was the big offender and uh, the scary one. And uh, it's not so much the case anymore, in the, but it can be a part of the, the formula. The story includes a couple of, of um, bios of recovering addicts, people who are on that long road to recovery. How <laughs> important is it in a story like this that's full of numbers and official sources to talk to the people who are actually affected by, uh, by addiction? I think it's absolutely the bottom line for any story like this. This brings the humanity to all of it. They are our neighbors, they are our friends, they are our relatives. I don't think that the Sarita Police Chief would mind. Uh, I checked with him twice on this uh, during an inter interview. He was on the record about saying that uh, he would not elaborate about numbers, but um, somebody in his family uh, he was close to, uh, lives were impacted um, in a big way by uh, drug abuse. And uh, I know I've had them in my family. Um, there, there are people we know, and that's why it's, it's all, important. It's all over the place. Uh, the last time we had a drug disposal event in this area, we had a really surprisingly uh, huge haul, and this is where people go into their medicine cabinets, and it uh, could be prescription meds or anything, stuff that's expired. You do not want to flush it down the toilet. Not a good idea. We had huge numbers come out of that, though, uh, in relation to even the rest of the state. Yes, that's true. And in some of the local uh, previous takebacks, uh, I had one source that said, you know, we'd be surprised uh, in places like Aravaca and some of the uh, smaller communities to get 20 people at these events. Um, we got 85 carloads, uh, and, but in pounds of pills, we got 230 plus pounds. That was more than twice any of the other much larger communities statewide. There was 14 of them in that time proximity. We were that far ahead of them all. We, and we get some of the reason is that we are a senior community and uh, our shelves do stack up with these when they're not being used. But um, I think uh, one of the things I'd like to point out is that um, a lot of these, uh, especially related deaths and the addictions are pretty preventable. But a lot of these people got into this because they'd had an injury and they were on prescription uh, medications, sometimes actually fentanyl, but it was made in a pharmaceutics lab, not, you know, in a garage, in a tent, out, you know, in the desert somewhere, uh, by who knows who, <laughs> including who knows what. 
Um, and they, so eventually their doctors saw a problem coming, they took them off the drugs. Well, they needed, they needed the hit. They needed, you know, the pain killer effect. They were addicts by then and then they turned to the streets because the doctors aren't giving them anything anymore. Right. Now we have another drug disposal event coming up. When is that? Yes, it's this Saturday the 23rd. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the uh, Sarita Police Department right out there in front. And that's off Sawanita Road uh, at, right there at the town government complex next to Town Hall. Okay. So we hope to see a good turnout. Very good. That's October 23rd, another drug take-back event. So thank you for joining us on 5 Minutes with the Newsroom. We'll see you next time. Thank you.